So there's a very neat property involving the zeta function, or really an, an, an integral representation for the zeta function, which looks like this. It's zeta of s equal to 1 over our gamma function of s, integral 0 to infinity, x to the s minus 1 over e to the x minus 1 dx. And this is this is sort of a, a super cool property right here because, I mean, one, you know, we have an expression for this kind of hard integral right here, which is a product of the zeta and gamma functions. But also, we, I mean, we just have an integral representation for our zeta function, which is which is sort of surprising. I mean, so far, we, I mean, we started off with a series representation for zeta, then we figured out a product representation for zeta, and now, after all of that, we've got a, an integral representation for zeta, which, which is super cool. Uh, so, okay, that's awesome. How are we going to prove this thing? And uh, the way that I'm going to prove it for you is by starting off with this integral right here, trying to solve this integral. And in the process, seeing if we can get out a zeta function and a gamma function. So let's start with this integral. So we have integral 0 to infinity, x to the s minus 1 over e to the x minus 1 dx. Okay, that's great. Um, whenever I see a 1 minus something or something minus 1 in the denominator, um, I start thinking about geometric series. But this isn't quite in the form where we can use a geometric series. But it's easy to re rewrite such that it is. And we can do that by writing x to the s minus 1, e to the minus x over e to the minus x minus, or, or, or rather, uh, 1 minus e to the minus x dx. Okay, so so what what just happened here? Well, let's re let's recall that our our geometric series for so for some function, uh, and I won't do it generally for some function here. I'll say for this guy right here, our geometric series is exactly equal to this guy down here. It's equal to e to the minus x, which is the first term in the series, all divided by one minus e to the minus x. Perfect, and so that means that uh, this term right here, which was originally masquerading over here. Uh, is actually a geometric series, and so I'm going to write it as that series. So we have same integral, x to the s minus 1, and then this series, e to the minus nx, from n equals 1 to infinity, and don't forget that dx. Okay, so we're making some progress. What's next? Um, well, I guess before getting too far ahead, let's, let's um, I mean, how, how do we see this going? We we, we know the answer, right? We're trying to prove it. We know that we want some zeta function times some gamma function. And so to me, that means that we want some sum on one side, which gives us the zeta function, and some integral on the other side, which gives us the gamma function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out this sum. And, and so, so just start trying to force it into the form that we know it should be. And so if we do that, then we have what we have our sum from n equals one to infinity. And then we have everything else as it was. We have our integral x to the s minus 1, e to the minus n x dx. Aha, but this is starting to look a little bit like our gamma function, right? We have our x to the s minus 1, and then we have this minus, our e to the minus n x. So almost there, we have this pesky n out in front. Um, but that suggests to us that we should use a change of variables which has u equaling n x, so we can get that exponential right and du equal to n dx. And if we do this, what do we get? Well, what we get is our, our sums unchanged, n equals 1 to infinity. Our integral is unchanged, still 0 to infinity. But what happens here? Well, we're going to have our e to the u like we want. Our dx is going to become du over n. And what about our x? Well, our x is going to be, well, our x is equal to u over n. So we're going to have u to the s minus 1 over n to the s minus 1. Hey, now now this is starting to look uh, this is starting to look good. So what can we do now? We can uh, we can combine these ends right here, and we can pull them outside of the integral because they're not being integrated with respect to them. What do we have? We have sum n equals 1 to infinity. We have 1 over n to the s, right? Because we have n to the s minus 1 and n. And then we have integral 0 to infinity, u to the s minus 1, e to the minus u, du. And now we've actually done it. This right here is perfectly 
the series representation for the zeta function, and the integral representation for the gamma function, and it's gamma of s, as we can see. And, and it pulled out perfectly. Uh, you know, the, these two things aren't talking to each other. This sum is just in terms of n, which is out in front, and this integral is just in, term of, of, in terms of u, which has nothing to do with the sum over there. And so we've done it. We've proven that starting with this integral up here, by uh, using some trickery, you know, rewriting things in terms of a geometric series, and then, you know, using some change of variables, we were able to start from this integral and end up with the result we wanted. And so we've done it. We've derived an integral representation for the Riemann zeta function.